Let's look at the third member of this troika here, Good Reader, which is really a generic PDF and text reader. It could also read any other format that Apple supports on the iPhone OS. I quite like it because it's uh, the iPad version, particularly 99 cents right now on sale, because it lets you connect all the different sources you want to get uh, PDFs and other things, other formats. So for instance, I've loaded in Take Control Screen Sharing, a book I wrote that's in the Take Control series, and I can you know zoom through it, zoom in and out. Also supports rotation, searching. I could search on a word I searched for, Skype. Let's see what it says about Skype in here. I don't even know if Skype's mentioned in this book. Let's find out. Sure it is. There it is. So there's information about Skype. I can look at that. I can tap in. Oh, it's too big. And you have, um, you know, I can read through it page by page. I can scroll through it. I've got some PDF controls. <coughs> That's some PDF controls. And I can, you know, read this book page by page by page. You can also lock orientation in the program, which is interesting too. So it won't actually follow, even if you've got the hardware lock turned off, you can lock it. So as you turn it, it won't change the orientation as well, which is nice. Let's go back to the main interface just to show you a couple other things about it. Uh, it's got, as I noticed, it's got the search feature. We already looked at that. Go back to my documents, and you can see there's a whole number of things here on the right. Um, show you previews of documents. If I select preview and tap this, it'll show me a preview of that page. You can turn that off to save time and space. You can find files because these are all stored on the machine. You can also use, what I think is fascinating, is you can manage documents through iTunes as well. Uh, the iPad has a storage area that's mounted in iTunes, so when you're looking at the device, uh, when it's connected to a computer, you can select an application in the Apps tab, and then you can look and see what's stored on it, and you can manage that. You can drag stuff on and off, which is useful. So you can actually add PDFs and text files, other things, to Goodreader directly from iTunes without having to do it through the device itself. <coughs> Some other things you can do, you can actually browse the web. You can go to web pages like Google and download items directly from it. Now, Google Books does have free EPUB downloads and other downloads, but the problem is that EPUB can't be read natively by the iPad. You have to have the iBooks app to read EPUB files, even open ones. And you can't, uh, so you can't simply read the book formats the way you'd like to. Um, you can. Let's see, if we click on this, you have to do follow the link first and you download a file when you want to actually retrieve it. So let's see what Google's got here. They let their they make their files available both in EPUB and in, uh, let's see here, let's go back. Um, yeah, here's some books. Okay, so let's say we want to download uh, Tale of Three Hemispheres. Tap that, follow the link. And then there's a EPUB and PDF formats. If I tap EPUB, well, it gets me an unreadable format. If I tap PDF, well, I can download it. I click Download Linked File. It gives me a warning that it might freeze up for a moment while it's downloading, so back in operation. Go back to my documents, and I can see, let's see, where is that? Tail of Three Hemispheres here. It's in blue. I tap it. Now, here's the funny part. This is a scanned PDF. So this is actually not text in a PDF. It's the actual scanned pages, so not nearly, you can see, muck in it. The EPUB version, of course, is the extracted text. Um, it'll be nice when that's all combined. It might be able to read EPUB files directly in here. So not the best of both worlds, but uh, Goodreader is certainly ter terrific for downloading PDFs from web pages. If I go to, once again, our Take Control site where you can download samples of books and eventually download whole books from it. Go. If we go there, I could find a PDF to download and say, okay, I want to look at uh, Take Control of Running Windows on a Mac. I know there's a sample on the page. Tap that, tap follow the link. And let's find the sample. Now here it says free sample. I tap that, I tap download linked file. Say okay, go back to my documents, and then there it is Take Control of Running Windows on a Mac. I can tap that, and then I've got the sample right there and can go through and look at the text in the sample. Terrific, right? Another interesting feature, I think, is that you can use, uh, you can connect to servers, so I can mount local servers. Uh, this is a mail server where I can retrieve attachments. So if someone sends me a PDF, I can retrieve that directly into Goodreader and read it offline. Mobile Me, you know, Mobile Me disk shows up. 
and I can select documents I've stored there or someone else's, I can add a public folder, and anything that's accessible over WebDAV, or Dropbox, for instance, which I use for file synchronization. So everything I'm synchronizing is available here. I can pull this up and pull up Digital Divide, a folder I have some various PDFs in. I can pull in this file, downloads, and then immediately available over to the, close the box, immediately available over here as one of the files I can download. So pretty slick that this is all available. There you go, Seattle, where's the Seattle Tech Survey, and then boom, it's available and it's stored on the device. And then if I want, I can swipe to the right and just delete it from this device to free up some space, get rid of those files. So pretty efficient program at doing reading for things that are not bookstore oriented, but are still books or readable documents. And that's the demonstration. Thank you very much.